welcome to my show. I'm very, very happy that you're here, and I am also very proud of all of these works that I've created over the past year. Um, guys, can you come closer? <laughs> <laughs> um, but to talk a little bit about my work, um, I absolutely love the process of world building and creating these spaces that are not fully fleshed out, but that are stuck in somewhat this like state of transition. Um, so when painting, I try to envision myself or I try to envision these paintings somewhere between their conception of the world and the, um, the final establishment of the world. Um, I challenge myself to make these worlds just on the edge of recognition. And I really try to see how far just, just how far I can push a work before it becomes too recognizable, or on the other hand, too abstract. A lot of people see random objects, spaces, and shapes in my work, and I don't discourage this. I love to collect everybody's visions of what they see in my paintings. And I'm actually going to start a list of um, everything that people see in my work. Um, so nothing is quite identifiable in my work, and nothing is quite as it seems. Um, and, but you're also not completely lost in the abstract. They're still a little bit grounded. Um, and so this is why I chose to have all of the names of my paintings in Latin. Um, because yes, it is a historical and timeless language. Um, but it's also somewhat familiar, and anyone who has a little bit of knowledge of linguistics should be able to recognize what the names are and then think about what they mean, just if you think about it a little bit. <laughs> um, but so this collection began in September with this work right here. Um, when I started oil painting on top of what I call my personal matrix, um, this matrix is a collection of drawings of almost everything in my life. Um, I'm definitely a maximalist. I love chaotic spaces and these intense visual um, concentrations. Um, I'm a very messy person, and my parents can attest to that. Um, but so these drawings, I started collecting them and superimposing them on top of one another. Um, they include nature, architecture, abstract patterns, processes, literally almost anything. Um, and so there's so many layers. I have them on a, a document on an iPad that has all of the, um, that has all the layers of this uh, drawing. Um, and so my goal with this drawing was to fill in as many blank spaces as I could. Um, and so what I initially did with this matrix was I would screen print it and then like fill it in almost in a color by number manner. But this did not give me quite the atmosphere that I wanted. Um, so I transitioned to painting on oil, large scale canvases. Um, and so what I do with the matrix now is I, project it onto a large canvas. <laughs> project it on a large canvas um, in one of the earlier layers to give it sort of an outline basis. And actually all of the works in this room um, are based on the same matrix, um, which you can't really tell now because they've been developed much more. But it, I think it brings an interesting unity to all of the works because they all do come from that same starting point. Um, so, these are my earlier works from September. And so they are much, the areas that are defined by the matrix are much more precise and defined. Um, and there's not as many interactions between different sections, I would say. Um, I also used water soluble oil paints for the first few months of this collection. And so these are the water soluble oils. The rest are regular oils, which are much more fluid. Um, and so, with the water soluble oil paints, I could get a very scratchy and washy texture, um, which I did not like at the time, but um, I'll talk more about it later when I move to my more recent works. Uh, and yes, I guess I will move to my more recent works now. Um, so these two right here are the most recent. Um, they are much more fluid, immersive, and definitely kind of hazy in my mind. Um, they turned very dark, um, which is not something that I'm, which is something that I'm happy with, um, definitely compared to those paintings that are very light. Um, I love the glow that really comes through, especially with the orange and pink in this one, and then the red and pink in this one. Um, this semester I've been working on my color palette and really trying to um, create something or create a palette that really draws in the viewer and then also allows you to be sucked into this almost fantastical world. So I hope with the newer paintings um, that they feel like you're really a part of this space. 
um, or you might find yourself in this world in one of your dreams. Um, and overall, I want my works to express the inevitability of change. Um, and each moment there is a new ex exciting transition going on um, that you can't exactly name. And so I want to thank everyone for coming out and everyone who supported me in this process, my professors, my family, my friends, I love you all. And thank you. Too. So, and you said that they're all from the same. Yes. So, is it you were talking about like having it on an iPad? So, is it something you drew and then projected on different scales or different sections of it and then kind of painted over? Or what does that look like? Yes, each matrix or each painting has a different section of the matrix. Okay. Like some of them are zoomed in, some of them are really like the whole matrix is very, very chaotic. So, there's not one piece that has the entire thing. Okay. Um, but yes, they're all very similar. Um, like, I chose the most dynamic places of the matrix to really zoom in on and focus in for each painting. Um, and yes, it's on an iPad, but it has some physical drawings that I've like, translated to be visual as well. Um, when you were talking, you like said that you're like inspired, or like you're trying to like make worlds. Um, would you say you're like you're inspired by nature? Or like, because I see some like natural like colors and elements in your pieces, and I was wondering like if that's something you think about. Yes, I definitely um, draw a lot of nature into my works. In this matrix, there are um, a lot of like atmospheric drawings as well that are kind of scratchy and represent. They aren't representative of trees or any certain places, but I do really like the kind of landscape quality that it gives the matrix and then gives a lot of my paintings. But I don't want to call them landscapes. This is a hard question. Um, I, um, and it's going to sound a little strange. So you may or may not be familiar with the philosopher Emmanuel Kant. And in his, in his writing, he makes a distinction between beauty and the sublime. And I'm, my question is, do you see a distinction between beauty and the sublime, and is there one that you're more interested in with respect to your painting? I, I don't know that I want my paintings to be called beautiful. Um, so I would say I want them to be more sublime, and you know, you're kind of drawn into them, but you're not, you're fascinated by them, but you're not like, oh, that's very pretty and interesting, and I like that, and I want that like in my house. The best answer I have for that. So I have another question. Um, so I think I'm coming off of that like it is interesting because they're so visually interesting, but also like you don't necessarily feel comforted by them. Um, so you're talking about world building, and is it something you see in a specific direction, or like like oh this feels kind of utopian or it feels dystopian or it sits in a middle space like I don't know if that's how you're thinking of it in any way but like do you see the world's having certain value to them like kind of weighted values to them or do you see them as more like ambiguous spaces I see them as more ambiguous spaces because I don't think the worlds have fully been completed to the point where they would have values or to the point where it would be a dystopia or utopia I mean I definitely um I think the colors have some influence over that. Like, yes, these darker paintings might seem like a darker um, environment, but that's not the intention. It's just to create um, some sort of chaos and moment of transition. Did you paint in oils first before you started painting, or was this something you just recently um, I, started? I had painted in oils before. Before. Uh, How old were you, if I may ask, at that point about? Uh, very young, but not that young. <laughs> <laughs> You're still very young. <laughs> this is a painter art question. You said you started with the water soluble oils and then switched yes. to real oil because of the um, fluidity of the oil. Um, have you changed your fluidity with medium? 
Yes. And with, like, what did you explore with that? Like different mediums or just adding it versus not adding it? Um, I just added a lot of mediums, probably too many mediums, especially to these paintings, um, just to give them a very, very fluid quality. And like I said, those do feel very washy and almost watery to me. Um, and now that I'm working in real, real oils um, with a lot of medium, I actually kind of miss that washiness. Mm -hmm. And I think in my future work, I'm going to work on combining the two textures. I have a follow-up question to that. Have you considered starting these in acrylic and then completion in oil? Yes, actually all of them have a base layer. Okay. Did you choose a base fine. layer to show through later, or you knew you were going to obliterate it, or you didn't know? Um, well, more recently, I've been trying to pick very bright base layers so mm -hmm. that they come through at the end. I think that's why some of these are super glowy, because that base layer is really coming through and contrasting with the darker values. Um, like, this one is not as obvious. This one is not as obvious, but the base layer is um, very green and kind of yellowy, and then this one, the base layer is red. I'm sure she'd be happy to answer them, but we need to let her off the hook and enjoy <laughs> the rest of the